So today we'll be dissecting a leopard frog named for its distinctive cat-like reflexes. And we will begin with the external morphology as we usually do. This one should be a lot easier than the grasshopper because it's a whole lot bigger and more familiar anyway. So I got two here because I would like to have a male and a female, but uh, I won't really know for sure until I crack them open. So we'll put uh, this guy to the side for now and focus on Ezekiel. This is Ezekiel. He is a leopard frog. Um, and I think it's a he, but I do not know for sure. Males typically are going to have enlarged thumbs during uh, breeding season for amplexus, which is when they grab a female really, really tightly and hold on until she releases her eggs. So I don't know if these were killed during breeding season or not, and I'm really not sure if this is enlarged or not, but it seems pretty big to me. At the same time, this one also seems pretty big, so I'm not exactly sure. But let's count the fingers. We got one, two, three, four on the four limbs. On the hind limbs, we can see that they're nice and webbed for flying, probably, or something like that. I'm not sure exactly what frogs do. But with their cat-like reflexes and these webbed wings, um, I'm sure they make a, a pretty spectacular predator. Not something you would like to see at night, for sure. Um, we got one, two, three, four, five, and then we got a sixth little little toe there. See that little little nub? So they have ten fingers and toes collectively, but four and six, which is just unnatural. So we got um, massive jumping legs. We got um, a good mouth for eating um, insects, and. What we want to do, we're going to eventually peek inside there, see what he's hiding in there. But um, let's keep looking externally. So let's focus on, on the head and sense organs. So we have um, nostrils for olfaction. So these are external nares. And these are for detecting chemical smells. We have two eyes. These are not compound eyes. These are image forming eyes. and you can see them if you just kind of peek in this little Christmas present wrapping paper here. What you see, you should notice that there's this clear kind of membrane over here. This is called the nictitating membrane, and it's basically a second kind of eyelid that is transparent, so they can close their eyes while they're underwater and yet still see, which is pretty fantastic. So the nictitating membrane is this transparent layer, protects and moisturizes the eye, especially underwater and then you have a, a real eyelid as well. And then you have the, the eye inside there. Here, you will notice a oval tympanum. This is the sound sensory organ. So this is the base of their eardrum. And sound is important for grasshoppers. They have a very similar looking tympanum on, on them. It's also important for frogs. They croak ribbit, especially males, to attract mates and to signal territory. So sound and hearing is going to be very important for these guys. That's really all their external morphology. Got legs, got a back, got a front, you know, just typical, typical frog stuff. All right, so to figure out what is on their mouth, there is kind of two ways to do this. One, you can crack it open like this. And really what you need to do is kind of do a joker cut. And by joker cut, I mean put a smile on his face here and here. And it needs to be pretty deep because they don't really want to reveal their mouth secrets. Um, and yet we, we want that for them. So the other way you can do it is to, and this is actually the way I prefer to do it on a practical because it's shorter and easier. So you can do it one way or the other, but the other way is to just chop their head off right here. So find their, um, right beh behind their tympanum, if you can just chop through their head, which you know their vertebral column is pretty thick, but you have a scalpel and you're strong vertebrate predators. So you can make it work and you just slice through a little bit at a time, and then eventually, ta-da, look at that. So this is cross-section of Mr. 
Mr. Ezekiel. And on the other one, I, I'll do it the other way so you can see both, both ways. But now we have a head and we have a body. And what we're going to do with, we'll just put the body over there for now. And now it's quite easy to do the joker cuts because now we just slice it open to the substrate on the left side and the right. And then easy peasy. Look at that. Okay, so first thing, let's, let's talk about its tongue. Its tongue is bifurcated, which is interesting. It's also attached at the, at the front of the mouth. Your tongue attaches at the back. This tongue attaches at the front. And it's highly muscular. It can actually stretch out at a considerable, considerable distance to find and capture prey. It's really mucousy and gluey, so it can capture a dragonfly in mid-flight. If you look back here, we're going to find the... Um, epiglottal slit. So this is the, you know, the, essentially the opening to the esophagus and they can close and open it depending on if they're breathing or eating. And you will see two holes up in here and these are the openings to the eustachian tube. So let's just go ahead and poke through there and see where those lead. Nice. Don't, touch the, don't touch the chairs. My, so if you if you see the bulge there, what's that going to? Daddy, the Daddy, tympanum Daddy. membrane. Daddy. Yeah, Charlie, come here. Just try not to touch the, the blue. So I'm looking at the, a frog right here. See his sticky tongue? Daddy cut the frog's head off. And yeah, so we can see it better. And then this right here is the eustachian tube. That's a, a tunnel, tunnel that connects their ears. Can you say eustachian tube? ears to their throats. So this equalizes air pressure and helps with balance. And then um, if it's a male, you're going to have vocal sacs down in here. In these folds somewhere, there'll be a little uh, vocal sac. I don't see that. Nope, that's just a piece of nothing. Do you know it's a male? I don't. So one way to know it's a male is to find vocal sacs which I don't see. So if you run your finger along um, this, the upper jaw, you'll feel some teeth. Those are for gripping prey. Those are called mandibulary teeth. And then we also see these two little knobs here. Those are vomerine teeth. And they also help with gripping prey. So those are, are part of kind of its upper palate. And it uses those to grab prey. Um, what do you think? What do you think, Charlie? What do you think? Are you ready to go back? No. Watching. You want to keep watching? You want to keep watching? Maybe you can watch on the other side. Okay, so I think we got everything here. Uh, mandibular teeth on the upper and lower, really just upper upper jaws. Bone marine teeth here. Bifurcated tongue that connects to the front. We have the glottis opening to the esophagus. Eustachian tubes for balance. And um, don't forget the nictitating membrane on it's the so eye. Wet. Yeah, it's all juicy and wet, isn't it? It's all wet. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So that's the that's the frog's head. Yeah, the inside looks kind of weird, doesn't it? Yeah. So this is this is the cross section here. We can see. Hey. What do you see, Charlie? This is the, the backbone here, and it's dorsal nerve cord with is back that muscles a, there. Is that another one? Yeah, there's two frogs here. There's two frogs. It's two frogs. And what we're going to do is, uh, to make this easier, we're going to cut off his arms here so we can get inside easier. So to do that, we're what just... Is this knife? Mm -hmm. This big knife, we're just going to carefully cut through there, through the shoulder socket. Same on the other side. And Daddy needs gloves. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I need gloves. And so now we can get in there pretty easily. So let's, what we're gonna do is take some scissors. Let's go ahead and take the skin layer off first. And it's probably easiest to just cut Along the edge. No, 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 no. 
How many frogs? The skin separates pretty easily and on frogs. A mouth! Do you see a mouth? A long mouth. A frog's, frog's mouth. mouth? That makes sense. It is. Mm -hmm. Do you think you mm. would like to be a frog? So we see some pretty good abs. So insect protein is pretty good for muscle development. And we see a ventral um, blood vessel <laughs> there. And we, we're not too concerned about the skin. We're mainly just using that to get no to the insides. Uh, you can have a snack. We already had lunch earlier. Now I'm going to cut down the midsection. So through the sternum, through the muscle tissue. Be careful you don't get inside the, the organs and mess anything up. And so with scissors, and then you'll, you're going to see some, some transparent membranes. These transparent membranes are peritoneum, and you'll see one, the pericardium, that connects, that covers and protects the, the heart right there. So this, this little guy is the heart. And we're going to want to kind of peel gently with a scalpel, peel that back. So we can see all the organs inside. It's one side and the other. So now we're getting into the, the good stuff in here. So now we can use our pins to pin everything back. And we can actually, if you don't want to pin things back, you can just completely open them up. Sometimes that's easiest. Okay, now we can see all the internal organs. And what you're going to notice is We already talked about the pericardial uh, membrane connecting the heart, so we know this is the heart. And then they, these large organs here, this is the the lungs. I mean, not the lungs, not the lungs. That's a common common mistake. These are this is the liver. The lungs are going to be back here behind everything. So this these are the 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 liver. This is the left lobe and the right lobe of the liver. So um, as with all our dissections, try to identify things in context and then um, also by themselves. So let's take all of that out. The lung tissue is, pr is pretty cool. You can um, kind of I'm going to cut it open and show you the inside. The inside, you can see all the vascularized tissue, lots of surface area. It's very spongy, so lots of surface area for gas exchange. And then I want to extract these ovaries. We talked about these, so this is this material here. You can actually see the individual eggs, little circles, lots and lots of eggs. And then we have the oviducts down here. So these are going to be um, easily confused with a small intestine. So just uh, remember that the, the oviducts are a lot tighter coils. They're smaller, look more like um, ramen noodles. And the small intestine looks like this. So small intestine, oviduct. And then we got some strange things up here. What is this little thing? So this is the fat body, and the fat body is used for storing fat. So tri triglycerides, and during um, right before the winter, before hibernation, these are going to get extremely large, so that they can live off their fat reserves during hibernation. 
So you can kind of tell when it died based on the size of the fat body. These look pretty um, medium, so it was probably in summer. So fat body, ovaries, all kinds of good stuff in here, right? The frogs are usually pretty clean. This frog is not especially clean, um, but here, this little bulgy thing, that's going to obviously be the stomach. There's going to be, this is a nice constriction right here. This is the pyloric sphincter that separates the stomach from the uh, duodenum, the small intestine. So let's just take a peek inside the stomach. Actually, let's extract it first and then take a peek inside. And as you know, frogs generally eat insects. And so what do we have in here? We have all kinds of stuff, but we see um, grasshopper legs, some beetle bodies, some, a stink bug. Um, interesting stuff, all kinds of insects. So he has been well fed with all these little insect parts. Uh, a little bit gross, so we'll just set that aside. Delicious. And then we have the small intestine and the um, here. So you see the small intestine and then you see a very obvious large intestine right there. So the small intestine and large intestine are very easy to differentiate in, in frogs. In the back you're going to have kidneys. I'm going to crack open this other one though and see if, if things are a little bit uh, cleaner um, so we can see the gallbladder and, and the kidneys and the spleen and the pancreas. This specimen is a little bit better and if you do choose to do it uh, like this instead of chopping the head off and you open it like this, just make sure you get in the, the heart up here. It's, it's further north than you think. So. I'm going to pull, open, uh, pull back the, the right lobe of the liver and you see a little sac here. It's usually greenish, but um, in this specimen it's not. This right here is the gallbladder. This is going to store bile, and bile, um, as you guys are very familiar with by now, um, bile digests lipids. And then bile is secreted eventually into the duodenum through the bile duct. And so I'm just going to remove the liver here. L the liver produces the bile and then um, it gets stored in the gallbladder, which you can see, which I just pointed out to you. And so we're gonna remove this, and then I want to be able to see the stomach. We won't make a mess of this stomach. I want to be able to point out the pancreas, and the pancreas is gonna lie amidst all this stuff in kind of the, the, the small curve the lesser curve of the stomach, so you have the greater curve and the lesser curve. And if you can kind of wade through all the mesenteries, the connective tissue, what you're going to see is this long, thin, tan organ right here. I'm talking to my students. Yeah, there's nobody here with me, but I'm recording. So the the gall the pancreas is this Daddy? right here. And this is going to um, primarily regulate blood glucose levels. That's what we're primarily concerned with. And um, see the stomach ends here and then the small intestine begins. So we want to find the spleen. This one has a very large fat body and a very small reproductive system. So this one probably was killed near the very beginning of winter, late fall. You can see this massive fat body here for extra triglyceride storage and very little, very underdeveloped um, ovaries and oviducts. So this was an immature female that was killed in the late fall. Some forensic science for you. So I'm looking for the spleen. The spleen is a little kind of bean-shaped organ right around here somewhere. It's usually a reddish purplish color and it's often confused with the kidney. 
This specimen, however, I'm having a difficult time locating it. So I might need to try to find another one. The kidneys are going to be way back in here. And this right here, this dark purplish thing right here behind at the very back near the um, vertebrate, vertebra, this is the kidney here. So I'm going to try to find one more better specimen to find the spleen and find a, a better kidney for you as well. So in context we have the liver and then we have the small intestine, these little loopy things here. And then we have the stomach. And these little tan and black things here, those are the ovaries. So that's where eggs are going to be made. And then oviducts are these little windy little spaghetti noodles down here. And then the bladder will be down, will be a stretchy, stretchy material down in here. It's, it's very, very stretchy. You can see that here, how much it, well, I just broke it, but it's very, very stretchy. So that's the bladder, and this is a little bit of liver tissue. So uh, let's start taking stuff out. I'm going to take out the, the liver, right lobe, and left lobe. And you can still see the heart. I'm going to go ahead and take the heart out, too. And as we peel this back, we should also see two gray lumps right back there. That is, those, these are the lungs. So the heart tissue here, and then lungs here. Let's review a little bit. We have the livers. I've extracted a little bit already. But if you pull open, pull up the, the right lobe, you should see a kind of fluid-filled sac right here often green colored but obviously not always. This is the gallbladder where bile is stored. We're gonna, I'm gonna keep extracting the, the liver but I wanted to point out that gallbladder to you again. This one also has a, a nice example of the pancreas. So the pancreas is often um, most easily seen on the dorsal side. So if you lift the stomach up like this you should see this thin tan tissue thing right here. It just looks like a little string, but it's not part of the kind of clear connective tissue, the mesenteries. So this right here is a pancreas that secretes glucose and regulates blood sugar levels. So now that we've seen that, we can just cut the stomach out here and with the pancreas. And we see the, um, the ovaries and the fat body. We can cut all that stuff out as well. So um, give me a minute to do that. The last thing I want to show you is the spleen, which can be found um, kind of in the middle of all these intestines. It's this little sac right here. It's often kind of a dark purple red, and it's going to be, it's right here. Here it's been a little punctured. But this is the spleen, and that's going to recycle old blood cells, and it's important for producing um, an immune response. So immune response and recycling red blood cells, this is the spleen. The kidney is going to be way back here, and this is what it looks like when it's extracted a little bit. It's usually a dark purple, kind of long, flat organ right at the base, um, right next to the um, backbone. So kidney spleen, small intestine, um, large intestine, and bladder. If I were to ask you what this is, you would know this was the liver, it's the fat body, stomach, right here we have the pancreas, right there, it's been broken, but that little line there is the pancreas. This is the kidney, this is the small intestine with the spleen and the large intestine starting right here. And then down here we have the ovaries and the oviduct.